This uh, podcast is going to go over how to configure an ASA 5505 specifically for SSH access. Uh, I am connected to the ASA. It is in its default configuration. In its default configuration, it has an IP address of 192.168.1.1, and it gives out IPs to internal clients uh, via DHCP. So my machine has an IP address of 192.168.1.5, and the ASA has an IP address of... 192.168.1.1. So first off, you know, can we SSH to it in this configuration? And if we try, uh, it hangs and doesn't actually try to connect. It times out. Uh, so no, we can't connect to it in this default config. We need to do some stuff to make that work. So a couple things we're going to do that aren't necessarily required, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, first, we're going to do is set the host name. So to something other than Cisco ASA. I'm going to call mine ASA. We're going to set the domain name. Domain name. I'm going to call mine rich.lab. And then we need to generate uh, keys. We need to generate the RSA key that SSH needs uh, to have. So this will generate the key. You can, if you want to specify some other modulus other than the default value, you can specify that. I'm going to leave it default, which I think is 1024, but I don't really know. So I have a SSH key. Um, so next thing I need to do is I need a user to log in as for SSH. So I'm going to create a user. I'm going to call my user Rich. I'm going to give my user a password. Um, the password in the command line will be visible. Um, when you type it, so you want to make sure nobody's looking if you're typing in a, a secret awesome password. I will not be doing that. I call my pass name, my, my uh, password temp pass. Uh, next thing we need to do is actually tell SSH to use the local database uh, for authentication. Uh, no, AAA. Authentication. So we do this, we want to do SSH. It also makes us specify the console. I don't know why, it just does. And then there's a predefined server tag for the local database called local. If you were gonna use a radius server, you could do something similar to this, but instead of specifying local, you would specify uh, the name of the radius uh, server group. So we'll just do local. Uh, local is case sensitive, all caps. So make sure you put in all caps. So now I've just told it to use the local database for authentication. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to actually allow the SSH connections. So before we tried, it actually timed out. Uh, it timed out because the firewall was not allowing connections to the SSH port. So we need to allow SSH from our local subnet. In this case, it's going to be the 192.168.1.0 subnet with a 24-bit mask. And we want to allow that on the inside interface. So I do believe that is everything I needed to do um, for access. So yeah. Oh, I did test this before I uh, did the podcast for once. So it doesn't like the fact that I tested and then generated a new key. So I need to get rid of uh, that line in my file. I screwed up that line. All right. So now it should work. So now it asks me if I want to accept the key. Yes, I'll accept the key. It wants me to log in as rich with a capital R, which isn't going to work. So I need to specify which user I want to connect as. That's going to be lowercase rich. So that is how you configure remote access for an ASA on the inside interface.